You are listening to Perplexity. <laughs> everyone, and welcome back to another spooky bonus episode of Perplexity, a Mystery Podcast. I'm your host, Kadra, and this is my last planned bonus episode for a while, as the month of October is sadly coming to an end. I thought I would finish this bonus series, if you will, by reading the infamous poem by Edgar Allan Poe, The Raven. First, I would like to read a little excerpt from jamesmilson.com. It reads, Dusting off a longtime favorite to help set the mood for Halloween weekend. There are many works of literature and poetry that have stuck with me as favorites over the years. Long after being required to dissect, analyze, and memorize them for literature classes in school some years ago. Now, they may simply be enjoyed as entertainment on their own merits, as originally intended by the authors. One such piece is Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven, a very appropriate share as we approach Halloween. This narrative poem was originally attributed to Poe's in the New York Evening Mirror on January 29th, 1845. Though not bringing much financial benefit in and of itself, the raven served to make Poe very popular in his time. The poem remains one of the most well-liked poems ever written, and always one of my personal favorites. Frequently associated with Halloween now, the poem features a distraught lover, sadly lamenting the loss of his love, Lenore, on a bleak December night. He is visited by a talking raven, and the poem follows his slow descent into madness. As Poe stated of himself, quote, I became insane with long intervals of horrible sanity, end quote. Here then for your Halloween festivities, The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Here goes. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor," I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December. And each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow. From my book's surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore. For the rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door. That, I scarce, was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, 
and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing. Doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token. And the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back in the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what the red is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with main of lord or lady perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Bird or beast upon the sculpted bust above his chamber door, with such name as never more. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless, said I, what it flutters is its only stock in store, caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never, nevermore. But the raven still, beguiling all my fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then, upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt and ominous bird of yore, meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing, to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er, she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, 
by these angels he hath sent thee. Respite, respite. And nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh quaff, this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. Quaff the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore. Desolate yet, all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there, balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore. Tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden. It shall clasp a sainted maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked upstarting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thou soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken, quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out of my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. And that is The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. I hope you all enjoyed this bonus episode of Perplexity, a mystery podcast. If you did, be sure to let me know and leave a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening on. That is the number one best way to put this show in front of dozens of other listeners and support future episodes. I hope you all have a wonderful Halloween, stay safe, and I'll talk to you tomorrow for the final episode of October. And trust me, you don't want to miss this one. Bye.